Well, good morning, friends. Hope everyone uh, got here safe and soundly. A little bit of extra snow, although um, not not that I'm picking on Ontario, but we can be grateful that we, <laughs> we don't have freezing rain or anything like that <laughs> that we uh, that keeps us from being on the roads today. Uh, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask that you turn with me. Uh, to the Gospel of John chapter 20, just a very short uh, passage for us this morning. Uh, John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. It's also going to be up on the screen for us. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of His disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. May God bless the reading of His Word. Uh, Bill Hybels, the former pastor of Willow Creek Church in Chicago, tells the story of an encounter that he had with a young woman. I recall one time being in a restaurant studying for a message, and a gal looked over from her table and saw me reading the Bible. She said, why do you study that stuff? And I thought, just to stimulate a little discussion, I'd try to knock her off balance. So I said, because I don't feel like going to hell when I die. I was going to be really blunt, but I took the edge off it a bit. Uh, And she said, well, there's no such thing as heaven or hell. I thought, well, I got something going now. Um, So I turned in my chair and I said, well, why do you say that? Well, she said, everybody knows that when you die, your candle goes out, poof. And I said, You mean to tell me there's no afterlife? No. So that means you must be able to live, just live as you please. That's right. Like there's no judgment day or anything? No. I said, well, that's fascinating to me. Where did you hear that? She said, well, I read it somewhere. Well, can you give me the name of the book? I don't recall. Can you give me the name of the author of the book? Oh, I forgot his name. Did that author write any other books? I don't know. Is it possible that your author changed his mind two years after he wrote this particular book and then wrote another one that said there is a heaven and hell? Is that possible? Well, it's possible, but not likely. All right, I said, let me get this straight. You're rolling the dice on your eternity predicated on what someone you don't even know wrote in a book you can't even recall the title of. Have I got that straight? I was playing a little Columbo act with her. And she looked me right in the eye and said, that's right. And I said back to her, you know what I think, sweetheart? I think you've merely created a belief that guarantees the continuation of your unencumbered lifestyle. I think you made it up because it's very discomforting to think of a heaven it's, it's a very discomforting thought to think of a hell. It's, a very, uh, it's very unnerving to face a holy God in the day of reckoning. I think you made it all up. Well, we had quite a conversation after that. <laughs> belief can be a powerful thing. Uh, belief moves us out of our comfort zones and goes in directions we may have never traveled before. Belief in Christ transforms us into people we could never have imagined. Belief is at the heart of faith. In the modern world, knowledge always seems to trump belief. Some define belief as simply a a guess, um, whereas others hold it as a conviction. And in the Greek understanding of this word, it's not simply to think something or even to be convinced of a propositional truth, but rather it's to trust, to have confidence in, to to put a complete reliance in the thing believed. 
Well, looking through John chapter 20, following Christ's resurrection is a test in belief for some of his followers. Mary Magdalene is the, the first to see the resurrected Jesus, and, and she believed it was him. The Apostle John saw the empty tomb and, and believed that Christ rose. And then Jesus appears in a locked room to everyone but Thomas and tells them he's sending them out to preach the gospel. Thomas has some doubts that it really happened. And so when Jesus reappears, he calls on Thomas to shed his doubts by showing it's really him. John ends the chapter, which really feels like an ending to the book, that all of this was written that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. The book of John's not so much a biography as it is a, a treatise on, on faith. Now, of course, it's not the only place where we see uh, the exercise of belief. Uh, Genesis 15, 6, we read that Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. The Hebrew word there, uh, translated amen, means to make firm or to trust. And, and it's also interchangeable with the word that means to turn to the right. Trusting means a willingness to change directions. In the book of Romans, Paul said that in Abraham's belief, he was fully convinced that God could do what he promised. Now, there are a few things that we should know about belief. Believing is not about ignoring the obvious. Thomas could not ignore the obvious when Jesus appeared before him. And yet, flat earthers ignore the obvious when they see shots of the planet from space and see the sphere. <laughs> believing is also not accepting a lie simply because you've been told to believe it. When the Apostle Paul was presenting the gospel in Berea, we're told now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica. For they received the message with great eagerness and examined the Scriptures every day to see if Paul said was true. Belief is definitely strengthened by a careful study of the Word. We discover that it is true when we spend time in Scripture. Believing is also the doorway to a life of faith. In Acts 16, the Philippian jailer came to the end of himself and he asked Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? They showed him the only way. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved along with your household. Now we don't have to wait to have all the answers or, or try to connect all the dots before we come to a place of faith in Christ. We can carefully search, but there comes a, a point even in that where we need to respond directly to the living Christ as the gift of faith makes Him more alive to us. Belief is also strengthened by the witnesses who share their belief with us, which can embolden us as well. Belief in Jesus gives us courage to walk the trail of faith. Thomas had doubts, but once he was confronted with the truth, he walked forward fearlessly. Believing is dynamic. It's not something that, that stands still. Referring back to Genesis 15, Abraham believed God all along the journey. Now, it definitely got harder in the middle of things, in the waiting for God to follow through on, on His promises but he was considered righteous by the fact that he kept obeying. Holding on to belief allows us to live differently from the way we were before. Belief in Jesus allows us to be kind and compassionate to one another, 
forgiving each other just as Christ for God forgave you. It's Ephesians 4.32. Fear can hinder us from walking the trail or even get off the trail. We must be brave and walk confidently the path that belief in Jesus takes us on. The actions that take place as we walk the trail can strengthen our belief as well. Belief in Jesus also leads us into roles we never knew we could do. Mary Slessor was a a missionary to Africa at the end of the 19th century who started her ministry by working in a mission in Scotland. At the mission, Mary learned to care for the outcast, the, the sick and the poor. Her desire to serve God by loving others grew stronger as she reached out to hurting people and face the challenges of working a mission in the slums of Scotland. Her compassion, wisdom, and strength grew. Mary felt God call her to reach out to people who were not her own. So she left her home in Scotland and went to serve the people of Africa. And as she traveled to and through Africa, the courageous young woman had to come come to terms with the fact that even she had fears. Uh, Mary had once refused to cross a field because there was a cow standing in it. Mary was also terrified of crowds and public speaking. Once when she was speaking at a mission meeting, she stopped and asked all the men to get out of sight before she would continue. While traveling by canoe, Mary would lie in the bottom of the boat in terror or sing loudly to endure the voyage. Despite her fears, Mary became an advocate for the women of Africa and and stood up against some of some cruel practices of the Okoyong. For example, local customs demanded that a mother of twins be put to death along with her twin children. Mary saved the lives of hundreds of mothers and their twins. King David wrote, I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, verses 13 and 14. David's belief is something that is now fulfilled through the life of the church. We can see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living through the body of Christ. God is now at work in the land of the living also through the sending of His Son, Jesus. The church has become the personification of belief in Jesus. But of course, belief is always a choice. It's not something you're forced into. It's something you choose whether to be, believe or disbelieve. I want to I finish with a, a, a story here this morning. In 1997, a a group of 34 students from two state universities uh, in Washington State took a a study trip into the Amazon jungles of South America. Uh, They were led on the last part of their journey by Stephen E. Saint, who happens to be the son of Nate Saint one of the five Alka martyrs, Uh, Jim Elliott, Pete Fleming, Ed McCulley, Roger Udarian, and Nate Saint were the five, and they were killed 40 years prior to this in 1956 as they tried to make contact with the Alkas, uh, properly now called the Haurani, or Waurani, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but. What has happened since that day has been a miracle story. This last fascinating glimpse into the miracle was reported in Christianity Today in uh, March 1998. This group of 34 students had come to study what they thought would be Stone Age people. Steve Saint has a home among the Haurani. Some of the very men that appeared 
or that speared his father and the others have become like adopted grandfathers to his own children. He has been helping the Haurani develop ways of raising money for self-sufficiency, and he met this group of students himself. The 34 students were taken by bus deep into the forests as far as roads would go, uh, where they were met by, excuse me, three Haurani men who then led them on a 14-hour hike through jungle trails, followed by a journey in large dugout canoes to a campsite along a jungle river where they were joined by other members of the Harani tribe. The students quickly learned to respect and enjoy the warmth of the men who guided them. They were welcomed at the campsite and were so comfortable with their new friends that they asked Steve when they could meet uh, when they would meet the Stone Age savages they had traveled so far to meet. Well, Steve told them that they had been traveling with them and they were now surrounded by them. The students didn't believe him. Uh, so Steve Saint suggested that they ask any of the older people where their fathers might be. One student took the challenge and nodded to one woman and Steve translated her reply something like, my father is already dead a long time ago. Having been speared, he died. Four other Horani, Horani told the same story. And one woman that had really charmed the students with her kindness, a very warm and friendly mother of ten, pointed to an old man in the circle. He hated my family and killed all of them. The students were stunned. They had second thoughts about their own safety. Then Dawa, one of the quietest women, spoke up. Pointing at the grandfather old man sitting next to Steve Saint, Steve Saint, she told the students, he is chemo. He, hating my family, speared my father and mother and brothers and sisters and took me for his wife. That really stunned the students. They were Deep in the jungle, they had to depend on these people to get them out again. Steve Saint said he thought of what they must be thinking right about then, and it occurred to him they didn't know the story we have heard so many times in Christian circles. Steve put his arm around the old man Chemo's shoulders and told the students, he killed my father too. Then there was stunned silence. At last, someone found the courage to ask, well, what changed these people? And Steve Saint repeated the question in the language of the Haurani. And the Stone Age people tried to tell the students how it used to be before they changed. They threw babies away when they were a trouble. They buried people alive so their spirits would not be able to return to torment them. Some had strangled their own children with their own hands. But then they tried to explain what they believe about a God they knew as the man-maker the missionaries told them about, who had sent his son to die for people who were full of fear and hate and revenge. Then Dawa, the wife of Chemo, spoke, quoting from Steve Saint's article, Badly, badly, we lived back then, Dawa said. Now walking God's trail, which he has marked for us on paper, meaning the Bible, we live well. All people will die, but if living you follow God's trail, then dying will lead you to heaven. But only one trail leads there. All other trails lead to where God will never be after death. And the students were silent. But then Dawa went on to give her own version of an altar call. Have you heard me well? Which one of you wants to follow God's trail living well? The students were silent again, and then one hand was raised. Steve said that Dao understood that what that raised hand meant and clapped her hands and said, Now I see you well. Leaving, leaving we will see each other again in God's place someday. Then she looked at the other 33 and said, Dying, I will never see you again if you don't follow God's trail. 
Think well on what I have spoken so that dying we can live happily together in heaven. 34 students of anthropology from Washington State had traveled thousands of miles into a South African rainforest to hear from primitive people about the most powerful, life-changing force in the universe. They had heard how believing in the God of love and grace can release life-changing power that can only be called miraculous. Belief or disbelief in Jesus is a choice only we can make. We can choose to declare Jesus is Lord of all or declare that Jesus is Lord not at all. Think for a moment. 34 anthropology students from Washington State traveled thousands of miles to the Amazon rainforest to meet Stone Age peoples and they discovered a people transformed by the miracle of God's love. They saw fear and hatred and revenge that had been changed into love and forgiveness and fellowship. We don't have to go that far to discover for ourselves this same life-changing power. That, that goes for the people around us as well. Believing in Jesus in the, the full understanding of trusting in and relying on God can bring a miracle here in our community, our city, our province, our country, our world. Let your belief reveal God's truth to you. Let your belief lead you deeper into faith. Let your belief give you courage to walk the trail that God has led you to and lead you into things that you never thought you would do for Him. Let your belief in Jesus move you forward regardless of what's going on around you. Regardless of the circumstances that, that we find ourselves in, never stop moving forward in faith. Sometimes we need to take a rest. I'll grant you that. But let's not rest too long. Let's keep moving forward on the path that God has for us. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you. Um, thank you for this passage, these verses this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the testimony uh, of others that can encourage us to believe. I mean, I am grateful, God, that we have a choice. I'm grateful, God, that we're not forced into believing something. But I'm grateful, God, for what you did through Jesus and what belief in Jesus has done for my life, for our lives, how it has changed us into people we never thought we could be. Lord, I pray for those of us here and those of us watching, strengthen us in our belief today. Remind us we don't need to have all the answers to move forward in faith. We just need to take one step at a time. And you will encourage us and strengthen us and help us even in those times where we feel like we're suffering for our faith. Lord God, I pray, especially in this season of Lent, I pray that others will accept Jesus, will believe in Jesus as well, will hear the stories, will hear Scripture, will 
hear our testimonies and make that step of faith as well. Lord, there, there may be some that, that we have forgotten. There may be some that we need to remind that Jesus is Lord. There may be some that we have to remind what Jesus has done for us. Lord, whoever it is in our circle, I pray, give us courage to tell the stories of faith. Give us courage to live out that faith in front of others. Lord God, just just continue to be with us in these moments and strengthen, strengthen our weak knees. Strengthen us and God, help us to stand and walk the trail of faith you have before us. Pray all of this in Jesus' name.